I've come to the Ecuadorian Amazon to meet with an unusual pair of activists fighting to preserve the rainforest. There's a small monkey about this size. This is Juan Pinchicuy, an indigenous Amazonian and member of the board of directors of Yachana Foundation. That's an organization dedicated to preserving the rainforest by sustaining the people in it. Juan grew up using poison darts and a blowgun to hunt for food. His home village of just five families was so remote, it was a five-hour walk to his neighbors. Before you were 17, had you ever um, had you ever seen electricity? Had no. you ever worn shoes? No. Had you ever seen running water? No. Never. Wow. Never. By the time Juan was 17, his older brother had already left the jungle. 13 years ago, Juan decided to visit him. And on the way, he passed through a town. That was my first time getting out of my village. I had to walk like uh, three days and then I took a plane. That was my first time flying. And when you got on, on the plane, were you barefoot or? Uh, well, my brother sent it to me, a, a pair of shoes, shoes. <laughs> and then I had to come. It was really actually weird, you know. Uh, I, I was wearing that and I was like kind of walking with the heavy <laughs> shoes like this. And I, it, it was, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, interesting at the same time, as you're saying, overwhelming, you know, for me first time being in a city. Juan ended up working at an eco-lodge in the Amazon. The lodge was run by a Kentuckian, Douglas McMeekin. In the United States, Douglas had been a successful entrepreneur with millions invested in various ventures. But just as he was entering middle age, he lost everything when he went bankrupt in the 1982 recession. So you're in your early 40s and your business goes bust Right. You go bankrupt. Yeah. That must have been incredibly devastating. It was. It was. My father died at the same time. Wasn't that much inheritance, but what little inheritance was went to pay the creditors. I mean, it was more of a symbolic thing. I had nothing. And is that why you're here, that you, in a sense, went as far away as you yeah. possibly could from, from that world? Yeah. Douglas visited Ecuador as a tourist and wound up moving to the Amazon. In 1991, he started what's now called the Yachana Foundation, a network of education and social service programs aimed at preserving both the health of the rainforest and of the people who live in it. I booked a room at the Yachana Eco Lodge. Opened in 1995, the lodge is one of a couple of profit-making centers which fund the foundation's efforts. Over the years, these include a health clinic, educational projects, and their forest reserve of 4,300 acres. But Douglas also thinks small, like this micro-enterprise um, project. Let's walk over here where the cacao seedlings are. So how does this end up saving the rainforest? Okay, these are all cacao seedlings. Cacao, or cocoa as we know it, is used to make chocolate, and it can be a valuable cash crop. The people have to make a living. They can either chop down about 50 acres of forest to put pasture land, or they can chop down about five acres of rainforest and raise cacao and get the same income. So this is what people have to realize when you're talking about, quote unquote, saving the rainforest. It doesn't mean just locking it all up and not touching it. People live here. We have to recognize that they have to make a living. And this is why our whole focus is on education so that people can, can learn how to do things in a better way. That's good. With that goal in mind, we visited the foundation's latest development. This is the Achana Technical High School. This is a school where the students learn by doing. It's hands-on education, with lessons more often taught in the jungle than in the classrooms. That said, they've just put in a full computer lab. We're a strong believer of bridging the digital divide. The kids are all learning how to use internet, they browse, they're communicating. We're in the process of setting up a blog. It has to start from the bottom up. And that's what we're doing. The idea is to educate the people who live in the rainforest about the value of their own environment. 
The world's rainforests are now disappearing at the rate of a football-sized clearing every second of every day. One-fifth of carbon emissions now come from this deforestation. And preserving that forest should be the low-hanging fruit in the war on climate change. Okay, listo, okay. Señor, por favor. People like Juan have emerged as agents of change in their own communities, helping to preserve what's left. I know it's difficult. Now it's very difficult. But still, uh, with the help of education and so, so forth, we can, we can make a difference. I think Douglas and Juan are onto something. They're people from different worlds, but they've got a simple model for helping the rainforest survive and giving me a glimmer of hope for its future. In the Amazon, for The New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.